In this video I'll be working on a commission for my friend Jason who runs a recording studio called The Crunch which is in Baddersfield a few miles north of where I live in Norwich. It's set inside a Cold War bunker. I'll link to The Crunch's website below if you're interested in checking it out. Probably one of the coolest buildings I've been in, certainly around here anyway. Jason wanted a case built for a couple of mixing boards in his control room and after measuring up I did a 3D drawing to come up with a design in SketchUp. He wanted something that looked in keeping with lots of his vintage studio equipment and I suggested some peely veneered board and I had one piece left over from the vinyl storage unit that I made some time ago for my brother. That was another project video on my channel and I'll leave a link to that below too. It was going to be pretty tight to get all of the panels I needed out of this one board so first I marked up the rip cuts I wanted to make just to make sure that I had enough material. So I've marked up all of the dimensions for each panel and these marks here represent the kerf of my table saw blade so this here will be wasted material. The problem that I have though is that I don't have quite enough material to get two side panels which need to be 122 millimeters wide. Really I need about 30 millimeters extra width on this panel but this is all I have. But as the side panels are going to have this angle cut into them I think I might still have enough material I just might have to make my cuts a bit differently. I've marked up that side panel now. This is where the wrist rest is going to sit and this will be the front. And I'm confident now having marked that out that I should be able to get another side panel out of the rest of this material. So here I'm making the rip cuts for the top, back, front and wrist rest panels. And then I cut what was left over to length for the side panels and I used the bandsaw to cut one of the side panels to shape. I could then use that piece as a template to mark up the second side panel onto the last bit of material I had to work with and I cut that out too. Those side panels matched up nicely. I then marked up the length I wanted and also the direction of the mitre angles that I'll be cutting so that I don't make the mistake of cutting the same angle onto each panel. I set my table saw blade to 45 degrees and used my panel sled to cut the mitres, creeping up on the cuts to get them accurate. I also cut mitre joints to each end of the front panel. And then to glue the side panels to the front panel I used masking tape so that I could fold the joints together. And I used my plywood clamping squares and a few clamps to get the joints nice and tight. These joints won't be strong right now but later on I'll be adding a wrist rest panel and a bottom panel which will provide lots of extra gluing surface and therefore strength. While I was waiting for the glue to set, I could also cut the top panel to length which would attach to the back. So I've made my first mistake. I glued on this top panel forgetting that this needs to be removable in order to get the mixing desks in and out of the unit. But they haven't had long so I'm hoping that these will just break apart. We're okay. The top panel will later get attached with screws, so I drilled some pilot holes in preparation while it was in position. After a couple of hours I could then add the wrist rest panel. That got glued in place and held with brad nails at the front, and those small holes left by the brad nails will later be hidden by the wrist rest. I used a rebate bit in my router to cut a rebate around the bottom edges, and here you'll see I've clamped on a sacrificial board that's just to help support the base of the router to keep it level. And then I came back to get right into those corners. For the bottom panel I'm going to be using an offcut of 18mm spruce plywood mainly because it's just what I had available and also the client wasn't concerned about how it looked because it won't be visible once the mixing boards are added. 
I didn't have quite enough cutting capacity at the table saw for the cross cut, so I just marked that up and cut it with my circular saw as close to the line as possible. Rather than chiseling the corners that were left by the router bit square, which is what I normally do, I decided to instead round over the corners of the bottom panel just to try something different. I found a washer which closely matched the diameter and I used that to draw around the edges. And then I used the jigsaw to cut the curves. After a little sanding they looked good and the panel slotted in nicely. This plywood was really dirty on one side so I sanded it clean. To glue the base in I decided to use some of this new polyurethane glue that I've just got delivered which is meant to be a really good gap filling adhesive as it foams up. I'll leave a link to this in the description box. First you need to dampen one of the surfaces that you're gluing with a wet cloth and then you apply the glue. I then added the panel and put some weights on top. After about 5 or 10 minutes you'll see the foam start to appear and I scraped that away as it was drying to get rid of the excess. When I flipped it over I found the glue had foamed up on the inside too but it was pretty easy to clean off with a chisel even when it was dry. To finish the plywood bottom I decided to first use some shellac sanding sealer because I wanted to stain it dark. And softwood plywood like this tends to go a bit blotchy if it's not sealed first. The shellac just got rubbed on with a cloth and it dries really quickly. And then I came back with some walnut bry wax and I rubbed that on to add the colour. I rubbed away any excess wax with another cloth. And this shellac and wax combination left a really nice sheen. I applied the same finish to the other side of the panel too after masking up the side panels to prevent getting any finish on there. Next I want to apply a solid wood trim to all of these chipboard edges. And fortunately I've got lots of offcuts from when I made the cat radiator bed. I've got some pieces that are about 6mm thick and some that are 2 or 3mm thick. And I'm going to use a mixture of both of these. I'll use the thicker pieces on the front and the sides and the thinner pieces just to trim up these chipboard edges here. I used my usual method for adding the trim, first cutting one end at 45 degrees, then positioning that end and marking up the opposite end for length and the direction of the angle too, and then I cut that out of the mitre saw, making sure to cut it slightly too long so that I can check for length again. And then I can just shave off a little bit by bit at the mitre saw until I've got the perfect length. Before I glue that in place I also rip one of the thin trim pieces to the width of the chipboard that I'm using and then I cut that to length. That way I can glue and clamp both edges of the panel at the same time. I used masking tape to hold them in place, wiped away any excess glue with a damp cloth and then I added some clamps with a few pieces of wood just to help evenly distribute the pressure. The top panel also got trimmed starting with the short edges. I could then trim away the excess with a sharp knife and then add the longer edges. Here I'm marking up the length of the side trim pieces which also got cut to length and then glued and clamped in place. I also added trim to the bottom and I'm using a couple of business cards as a spacer here so that the trim sits a little higher up and doesn't sit on the surface that the unit is resting on. Once all of the glue was dry I could sand the edges and you can see here that the trim pieces blend in really nicely. I used screws with washers to secure the top panel. And then I could add trim to the edges of the side panels too. I did some final hand sanding and then I added some of my homemade oil wax finish to bring out the grain and colour of the wood. This stuff is available to buy via my Etsy store and there will be a link to that in the description box below if you're interested. After applying the wax I immediately wipe away any excess with another cloth. This second mixing board which I was able to take away from the studio with me because Jason doesn't need it in the next week or two 
needs to be built up so that it matches the angle and the height of the other mixing board. On the underside of the board, you'll see that there's a bit of space on both sides and also some fixing holes. So I think I'm going to create a wedge shaped piece that will lift this up a bit higher and also set it to the same angle as the first board. First I'm going to measure the thickness of this top panel and that's just shy of three millimeters. The other board looks a little something like this and it's 110 millimeters at the back, 70 millimeters at the front and 392 millimeters deep. So all I'm going to do is deduct three millimeters from both of these dimensions and I'll cut my wedges to those dimensions. It looks like I've got about 18 millimeters gap on both sides so I'll try and find some scraps of 18 millimeter plywood. I marked up the shape and then used my jigsaw to cut two pieces. And then with both panels held together, I put them in my vise and used my hand plane to get the top edges level with each other. I could then drill pilot holes into the wood and secure the mixing board to it with some screws and brass washers. Then I could check that the mixing board fits inside and luckily it fitted really nicely but at this point I didn't know if both mixing boards would fit until I deliver it to the studio where the larger mixing board was. I added my maker's marks to the underside of the bottom panel. The final job was to make the wrist rest and that needed to be 50mm wide so that there would be enough space above it on the panel to add masking tape as shown in the picture here. First I ripped a piece of 12mm thick ply to the width I needed. I chose 12mm ply because later I'm going to be firing in some staples that are 12mm deep. I got this foam off cut and some brown faux leather from my local fabric shop. I cut the foam with a sharp knife using the plywood as a template. And I actually cut two pieces of the foam because I didn't think it would be quite thick enough so I decided to double it up. I first hot glued one piece to the plywood so that it wouldn't move around. Then I added staples all along one side. Then I could add the next piece of foam, cut the faux leather to size and staple the other side. And for the ends I cut away the corners a bit and folded them in and stapled them and that looked pretty tidy. My first thought was to use some of this heavy duty mounting tape to stick the wrist rest down but after trying that it didn't really stick well enough. I think maybe either because it didn't want to stick to the wax finish or possibly just because it wasn't in contact with it enough because of the thickness of the faux leather on the back. So what I did instead was to scrape away some of the wax finish using my carbide scraper just in a few areas where I wanted to add some adhesive and then I put a few blobs of hot glue and sat the wrist rest down and it held nice and firmly then. Unfortunately I lost the video footage of that so that's why you're watching me talking instead. So when I got to the studio the mixing board was in use at the time so it couldn't be set up straight away but Jason kindly took a couple of photos once it was all set up and here they are. The two mixing boards look to be a pretty good fit which is great. I really enjoyed working on this project although veneered chipboard is far from being my favourite material to work with but it turned out nice and I think it fits the vintage studio equipment aesthetic quite well too. I did also make another smaller project for Jason too which I'll show on screen now and I filmed it too so maybe I'll do a separate short video about that although it was quite a basic one really so there wasn't much to it. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to help support the channel plus get early access to my videos, free project cut lists and plans, exclusive content and a name credit at the end of my videos you can do so via Patreon and there'll be a link to that in the description box below. Thank you for watching. Thank you.